So when using the wedge, you just want to make sure we get the technique um, right so we get the best benefit out of it. So I'm just going to go through how to use it when you're using it at home. Um, so first thing would be just um, placing it down on the bed so that the middle of your spine is in line with the groove. Uh, the idea being that the bony bit of the spine will sit in there and then the pressure will come in either side in here. Um, so if you just sit forward there, um, so you put it on the, the bed, um, you're going to work it in pretty much this section of your spine, so you can start with it wherever you like in that section, uh, often starting somewhere in the middle is, is a good starting point. Um, then from there, just lower yourself back down onto it, I generally put my hands behind my head just to support the head, um, have your knees bent up so your feet are flat. Um, then the first thing I would do is either just roll the pelvis back so you feel the lower back flatten, um, or sometimes if you feel a bit stuck, um, you can just kind of lift the bum up a little bit and then roll it back, um, and then place it down, and then it should be nice and flat through this area. Um, and you should have a flat contact on the bed or the ground, and, and then coming up through the, um, through the surface of the wedge itself. And um, probably starting in a little bit more of a crunch forward there in that position. Then what you're looking to do is have the movement that's coming in at the top of the wedge. So what we don't want to be doing is really arching and lifting up through here. And um, maybe just do one little where you are doing it wrong and just do a big tilt back and lift up through here. So you see your ribs are flaring up, back lifting up off the bed. And um, that means that the movement's happening here. You'll feel pressure up here, but you're not going to get the same movement. So just come up into that crunch again. So what you're going to look to do is I bring the elbows forward a little bit more and then you're just going to kind of leverage back until you either feel like you start to lift up through this lower back um, or you feel like that movement's kind of happening in through here. And Once you find that end position, then what you can just do is just pulse in and out of that position. So yeah, exactly like that. So you can see Luke's doing a really good job here where this is nice and flat. Maybe a little bit lifting, so you could probably come up a little bit more. Um, but you're not sort of losing that position and, and all that movement is happening up sort of through here. Um, so you might feel just pressure at the top of the wedge, you might feel a bit of a spreading, sort of referring discomfort from it. Spend 20, 30 seconds in that position um, and then just move it up or down to different spots. Um, keep in mind, if you're doing big movement, probably means you're lifting through the back and if you're doing it wrong, if your head and shoulders are getting near the ground, you're probably losing that back position. Um, and basically the lower down in your spine it is, the, the further up in the air your head and shoulders should be. Um, whereas the further up to the top, the, the closer your head and shoulders will be to the ground. So you just want to make sure you're getting that pressure and that movement at the, um, at the top of it there. Um, you might spend two minutes, you might spend five minutes. Just make sure you're working through each segment of the spine. Even if you've got a short amount of time, you'll still get some benefit. And if you've got a few more minutes, um, then you get a bit more loosening. Um, you might do it daily, you might do it every couple of days. You might just do it when you start to feel stiff and sore. Um, your physio can talk to you about what sort of frequency is right in your phase of treatment at the moment.